good there. Three, two, one. Remember that. I bet if I hopped on Smash right now, I could destroy everybody again. It's like once you play guitar, it's like the video games are kind of lame. Seriously. Um. All right, so Young's Candle, hold up, light of consciousness in the dark. Oh yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Everything seems to either be seems to be psychology to me, right? So it's a chicken for the egg case. I can't decide which game comes first, the chicken or the egg. Whether everything is, as Plato said, art and things that we look at that are kind of interesting, like, you know, a glass reflecting and refracting in the light in an interesting way, or like trees or a campfire or art or whatever, right? Right. Plato says that these things whisper truths to us, right? Okay. And I believe that they do, but I can't decide a chicken for the egg whether they whisper truths or that we find them interesting because they're a reflection of our own psychology. You know what I mean? So, right? Yeah. So, basically, a man exploring the earth and just exploring in general, right? Mm -hmm. So, 400 years ago, the first white dude to, like, chop through bushes in the jungle, right? Sure. All the way till now, I was watching these, like, deep dives with the little submarines and the lights. I mean, it's total Young's camp, diving down to the bottom of the ocean and seeing anglerfish. And by the way, all these fishes all have lights on. Like, they're trying to create their own consciousness in darkness, you know? That's it. Um, obviously, to me, it seemed like, as a hive creature, us exploring the earth... Mm -hmm is like man's personal journey into his own subconscious so you go into the jungles with a machete and that's chaos you're exploring your subconscious you go down to the bottom of the ocean well, at least in artistic depictions that really has some merit but yeah. what do you think of that in like real life do you think that makes exploration like a like what like a um, misdirection? No, I don't think so. I think it's they, they go with each other, they learn from each other. I think if you like go into the woods, your subconscious processes, like your your unconscious is going into the subconscious as okay. you're going into the woods. I so think it's like a paired thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'll agree with that. That's why kids want to play in the woods, that's why it's just integral to our nature. Um, I mean, it totally, it, it couldn't have been more obvious. When I watch the freaking light submarine thing dive down to the bottom of the ocean, it's dark. That junk scandal, there's just a little bit, there's four feet of light around this thing with two humans in it. And then there's crazy fish with freaking weird shit going on. And they have Young's candles light around. They're creating their own order. They want order. Even the fish, even the fucking squid, you know. And the light, Young's candle, right? Okay. Logical association. Pretend there's arrows, right? Light on the anglerfish, right? So I saw this anglerfish, right? So what does the anglerfish do? It dangles light, and then fish come up to the light and he eats them, right? Light, arrow of logical connection. Right. Young's candle. Ted's prior knowledge pool. Right. Logical connection arrow. Ted's prior knowledge pool again. Customato's metaphor about fire. Which also connects to masonry. Um, Customato said fire is a tool that can be used to either burn things or mm -hmm. cook food, right? Right. Fear is something which has to be controlled. I always compare it to fire. Fear, like fire, must be controlled. And once it gets out of control, like fire, it can destroy everything around you. Not only the individual, but everything around you. But once you control fear, like fire, you can make it work for you. Without fire, we wouldn't have the civilization we now recognize. The anglerfish uses the, the, the tool for evil. He uses it to trap unsuspecting fish. Okay. I see. Cool. How does that connect to young skin? Oh, that's kind of interesting because the, the light on the anglerfish is young candle in the, the sense that it's creating order in this chaos that is darkness, yeah. right? Yep. But he also uses it as a tool for evil. Can you use order for evil? I guess like Roman Empire and stuff like that. I think even you know, 
Killing I think you don't want to try to try too hard to force imagery or, or metaphors into concrete knowledge. If it comes, it comes. But like, I'm not trying that hard. It's sort of analogous to forcing, come. to trying to f squeeze the meaning out of I art when you can't always find it right away. I think I'm not. I think that came pretty quickly out of what I saw. I think that was whispered to me pretty fast. Right. And I'm just trying to crystallize it. But it's definitely interesting. I never thought about comparing Young Scandal with a good... Because you could use it for good or evil. It's essentially order. And order can be used for good or evil, right? Kind of. Germany was not used for good. It's not essentially order, though, in that sense. It's not the same as Germany. Young's Candle represents... Jung's candle represents what of a person becomes order. Like, so like, if you think of like all the possible neurons that can, you know, that can interact as being chaotic, mm -hmm. then your conscious is the ordered part of your personality. So it's only order in that sense. The, the, the candle represents the conscious mind. It represents that of knowledge which has been secured into a logical framework. So, I wouldn't say it just represents order. The candle is not Germany. Mm -hmm. The candle isn't Rome, and the candle isn't a building. Mm -hmm. The candle is a person. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's over-application. It's like, um... The candle isn't just order itself. And it, so it can't be given to just Germany or Rome okay. or... What um, is it then? The candle, a candle is a person. It's a conscious. It's the conscious. Oh, okay. Alright, well conscious is can be used for good or I guess you could say it's a body of knowledge. So you can compare, compare yeah. it to a culture in that sense. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Which can be used for good or evil anyways. I suppose. Yeah. Which is interesting that he chose fire because later in, you know, it's the fire metaphor comes to mind. Um, but I think you have to really think carefully about these metaphors. Yeah. Because think about the way the anglerfish uses light. See, the fish thinks the light means shallow waters because basic mm -hmm. creatures use yeah. light to, to get a sense of direction. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because, you know, light was surface. Yeah. Uh, um, so I think if you're going to lay out that metaphor, you have to be really careful about how you do it. You have to say, like... You have to, you have to say, like... Okay, so then what's the light that's being searched for that is a full plane, then? If the light's being used for evil to lure things... Well, then what's the light that's being searched for in Young's candle metaphor? What is the fish looking for? Yes. Safety. Okay, so... So you want to compare the light produced by this anglerfish mm -hmm. to the light produced by Young's candle. Mm -hmm. So, first question, what is the fish? In Young's candle, if we draw that metaphor back, a person. It's there's only one person. Physical in Young's body. Candle. What do you mean? In Young's candle metaphor, there's only one person: the person holding the candle. Yeah, Young. it's the person holding the candle. Well, the anglerfish is the person holding the candle. Yeah. So, what's the anglerfish luring? That doesn't exist in your channel, you're saying? Yeah, well, yeah, you gotta really lay out. Can it, though? Can it exist in your channel? Well, if it can, then, you know, then you can use it. But, like, yeah, if you really So it's sort of, it could be like this. Let's say there's many people in your channel. The stupid can be tricked by the smart. Someone who has a candle of consciousness and, and knowledge, he can kind of lure in and trick those who are sort of silly looking, you 
know, for leadership and guidance. I, I think you're kind of begging the question here, though. What? Like, you're like, you have... You have something you want to imprint onto this metaphor. And, and you're allowing that to let you choose how you view the metaphor. You think it just doesn't work? So you're putting the cart before the horse, essentially. It's like, um... I'm not saying it doesn't work. I'm saying you haven't shown me that it, you haven't you haven't proven even to yourself that it works. Is what I'm saying. I'm just trying to figure it out. You, if you figure something out, you have to look inductively at it. You can't just take something you want to be true and implant it onto that. That's where we That's get. That's just what I thought it was. All right. Uh, it just you you should understand that it's a very cautious thing trying to understand life in this mystical way because it's it's like it's like fundamentally religious when you do that which makes it like really easy to cause massive disasters massive disasters well yeah if you do if you make something religious and you're not careful about it you get Nazis I'm not making f- or a communist or something because I said an anglerfish used light It's a warning, Ted. I think you're overanalyzing how religious I was about that English fish. I think you're right. I do, because I don't fully understand what you're saying. But I was just saying, this is the logical connection. It's a bunch of very... Okay, how ideas connect. Two ideas. They have bold lines, which represents... They are yep. defined. Ide- I'm doing it again. Defined ideas. Yep. Off of these ideas are undefined ones, which are represented by dotted lines. As these lines pass each other, the dotted lines sometimes connect. This forms a logical connection. Yep. Jumping Young's candles to custom out his fire metaphor was like five dotted lines apart. So there's probably not much weight to it. All right. So I'll leave it at that. But there's some weight to it. And I don't have it figured out yet. It was just kind of interesting. I still think that totally, like, the deep abyss in space, the ocean jungles, is a very great metaphor for the man going into the subconscious. I'm just saying, when you extrapolate metaphors from real life... Not maybe, art. Maybe, stop. Yeah. Real life, art is made by men, but real life is made by gods. <coughs> if you extrapolate lessons from real life like that, if you extrapolate mer- metaphors from real life, it, it's like fundamentally religious. You should be aware of this, is what I'm saying. If you if you look in art and you wow. find a metaphor from that, yeah. that's just finding a metaphor. Mm-hmm. But if you do that in real life, it's a religious statement. Because earth was created by God? Yeah. So you have to be really careful with what you say? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll say this. I'll say I definitely think that that actually makes sense because if I had to guess, God would make earth a reflection of our consciousness, if I had to guess. And I think he did because as we explore, or at least run parallel to it, yeah. Yeah, and it makes sense because you're going to the subconscious, you know. Imagine swimming around the ocean and it's getting deeper and deeper and you only have the little light in your little tiny little ship and there's these other light creatures coming around. Maybe that's like the archetypes. They're like Young's archetypes floating around with other consciousnesses, and you can learn from them. It seems like that to me, does it not? Because as you go into your con- subconscious, you will see archetypes, like the shadow and it and stuff. No, it, it seems like that. It does. Yeah. You just, you know, just, it's a, all we can say is that dangerous territory. All right, well, how about this? I right, this one, get ready, because I... This is where we get. Really, I have no reason to say what I'm about to say. 